Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Judge, I'm the Chief Research Officer of Barracuda Networks, I'm here today to talk about uh, security problems that are facing educational institutions. There have been a lot of changes on the internet and the web over the last several years. Uh, the attackers are constantly innovating, looking for new ways to uh, increase their profits and increase their ability to illegally take money from, from your pockets into their pockets, or other ways to reach out to your users and, and your data. So first we'll talk about the changes that have happened in the technology landscape that have disrupted the traditional security measures for protecting users online. Uh, secondly, we'll look specifically at some of the trends that the attackers are carrying out and some of the latest techniques that are showing up at doorsteps of companies. Then lastly, we'll wrap up with some recommendations specifically for educational institutions of what you should be doing to safeguard your users and your data. One of the, the interesting things that we've observed here at, at, at Barracuda is that through our responsibility of protecting over 100,000 organizations around the world, we have this interesting view, a very unique view, of the types of threats that show up at the doorsteps of companies like yourself. And what we've seen over the last year is uh, one tremendous shift from attacks that are in the email universe moving over to the web universe. And the reason for that is that attackers are realizing that users are spending more time online, they're spending more time on the web, and it's easier to get in front of those eyeballs and convert your users to actually follow through to their malicious websites. So part of the, the background and backdrop for why this is happening today, why do we see such a volume of attacks nowadays, more so than we've ever seen before? There's several reasons for that. If you look at the changes that have happened on the web over the last few years, there have been a handful of things that have been advances in technologies that have also disrupted the traditional ways for securing users online. And what I mean by that, if you think of something, first of all, such as the growth of the web. And nowadays, the web grows at a rate of one new domain name per second. If you think about one new domain name per second, that means that traditional ways for classifying the internet and doing web filtering databases uh, can't keep up any longer. And so there's a need for a new approach. And how do you keep up with all these new websites and determine which ones are legitimate and which ones are illegitimate? And then you have this w problem of, of good sites gone bad. And what I mean by that is if you look at a, a second shift that has happened, uh, which is Ajax-based apps, or, or Web 2.0, or dynamic web apps, you know, these are the technologies that have brought us great advances such as spreadsheets that run within a browser or Google Maps or Outlook Web Access that feels like you're at a desktop. Uh, but it also means that a remote website has more control over your desktop than ever before. And so attackers are taking advantage of this principle to push malicious code down and malicious apps and websites down to your users. And so this is another disruption that is really changing the, the face of how you secure users nowadays online. A, a third area that has been an area of advancement in general on the web, but another area of disruption when it comes to security is social networking. With social networking sites like Twitter and, and Facebook and, and so on, the attackers are realizing that there are hundreds of millions of eyeballs at risk and users are spending a large majority of their time online sitting on those websites. So we've seen a number of advances and unique attacks that attackers are carrying out on these social networks nowadays. Another shift that has happened is an advancement in general in technology but also a disruption for security is the types of mobile devices that are being used. If you look over the last few years with the invention of the iPad and, and, and Playbook and Android and all of these mobile devices, we now have this very uh, fuzzy line between what is the difference between a personal computing device and a business computing device. And as that line blurs more and more, there's new questions about how do you control the access of, of these devices to your network and how do you protect the data that sits on these devices. So with that as a backdrop, we've seen some shifts in technology that have disrupted the, the traditional security measures. And we see why that's creating such a fertile ground for attackers. So let's take a look more in detail at, at some of the trends that attackers are carrying out to take advantage of this. When you look specifically at educational institutions, you almost have this problem of the worst of both worlds in that you have these uh, personal computing problems. When you think of students that use these devices in their dorm rooms or on campus for personal use, but you also have many of the problems of a business enterprise because at the end of the day, the, the school runs like many other enterprises. So you have kind of the worst of both worlds that you have to deal with. Uh, another problem that educational institutions deal with is that if you think of the mindset of an attacker, an attacker wants several things. It obviously wants to uh, attack your resources and get money from, from your population into their pockets. But the other thing the attacker is always looking for is more resources. 
more resources meaning a higher bandwidth, uh, more resources meaning uh, more computers to use as bots, uh, faster computers. And if you look at many educational institutions and campuses around the world, uh, you're very well connected onto the internet. Uh, you have many labs that are there for students' use that are idle oftentimes. So it's, it's very much a, a nice uh, honeypot for the attackers, and they're looking for ways to get inside of your network and even more so use your network for more prolonged, uh, persistent attacks. And so these are some of the challenges that are, are facing educational institutions that are unique that, say, a, a home user uh, versus a, a core business enterprise doesn't necessarily face. There are several different trends that we see in attacker patterns. Uh, one of the trends is the use of malicious JavaScript to carry out their attacks. Again, this JavaScript is something that helps fuel uh, so many of the legitimate websites on, on, the, on the web, but it's also something that's created more power for a remote attack to carry out on your laptop or your computer than ever before. And so we see attackers that are compromising uh, legitimate websites, creating this problem with good sites going bad. And so now there's this question of how do you tell if a site is, is legitimate or not when your users or your students are visiting it? It used to be in the past you would just have a static web filtering database. And you could say, okay, this is a new site, or this is a, a portal site, or this is some other legitimate site. Nowadays, many of the web infections that we see are carried out on legitimate sites. And so there's a need to have something actually in the middle, in between your user and the web, to always inspect not only the request traffic, but also the response traffic to see what is this website trying to do to my user? Is it, is it trying to deliver malicious content right now? And so the, the problem has gone from one of simply trying to control your users to actually protecting your user by actively investigating all the traffic, the request traffic, as well as the response traffic. So that's one area where we see attackers spending time with malicious JavaScript and introducing a, a need for technology to stand in the middle and protect those users. Another area that we see attackers spending a lot of time is on search engine malware. And because of the rapid growth of the web, again, remember that the web is growing at a rate of one new domain name per second. There's so much more data and many more websites coming online every day that it's harder to find information. So users are relying on search engines more than ever. So search engines like Google and Bing and Yahoo are as, as popular as ever. There's billions of searches that happen every month. And so what that means for an attacker is there's eyeballs that, that are at, at risk. There's eyeballs that they can go after. And so attackers are looking for, how do I get in front of those users that are using these search engines and make them land on my malicious websites? And so we see several different ways that attackers are using. One is to use search engine optimization to make their illegitimate site rank higher in the results. The other approach is to actually go after sites that already have high ranks to compromise those sites and have those users visit and then become compromised that way. So we've, uh, one of the, the experiments or studies that we've done at Barracuda Labs is to measure a search engine malware over the last year. And what we found is as we search through popular topics, just to see what normal people are searching for every day around the clock, and we measured how much do we find malware on the other end of just popular search topics. So no matter what's in the news, what happened in sports or cultural events every day, we're searching around the clock just like a normal user would, and we're investigating those results to see is it malicious or is it safe. What we found is that one in every five search topics leads to malicious sites, and one in every 1,000 search results leads to malicious sites. So you see the ability of the attacker to take over something that's very legitimate, something that's very popular, and redirect users to their malicious and harmful sites. And then we've seen this across every search engine, from, from Google to Yahoo to Bing, uh, even to Twitter. We see attackers taking advantage of the search engine malware to get in front of your users. So speaking of, of Twitter, the other area where we've seen a lot of activity is on social networking sites, uh, specifically Twitter and, and, and Facebook. Twitter with over 100 million users and Facebook with over 500 million users is an area where especially students spend a lot of their time when they're on a computer. And so the attackers are taking advantage of the viral features that are within these networks to make their attacks more efficient, to reach more people faster, and also to take advantage of the trust model. Because what you see day after day are attacks that say, hey, your friend John liked this link, or your friend Sue posted this picture. And it's taking advantage of the, the trust that is inherent in these social networks so that you go and visit that link or you go and view that picture. And the attackers are using that to make their attacks more efficient. So now with one photo that's being placed on Facebook, you can tag 50 people, and each of those 50 people can have 1,000 friends. So now you have you know, 50,000 people that are seeing this photo and the link that's been advertised with it. So now the attacker can advertise a, a phishing site, 
or a fake e-commerce site or a, a malware site uh, with one photo post but reach 50,000 people. That's way more efficient than uh, sending an email spam that goes out to 50,000 email addresses around the world only to have most of them blocked by spam filters. And so these are the types of things that, that we're seeing uh, attackers spend their time and resources on. Is one of the reasons that we saw the spam volume uh, in 2010 a drop in half from the middle of the year to the end of the year because attackers are realizing there's so many better ways to take advantage of, of newer technologies to make their uh, sites and their attacks more efficient nowadays. With that, the, the other problem that exists uh, that, that's facing organizations around the world as well as educational uh, institutions is this problem of, of botnets and, and web exploit kits. And the, the core problem there is, is this question of when we see so many attacks that are happening every day and so many different domains that are attacked, there's a question of why is this happening at such scale, at such volume? Who's having the time and the resources to carry this out? Well, the answer is that a, a very small set of talented people have packaged their skill set, they've packaged their software and created these web exploit kits. And these web exploit kits are then uh, packaged for sale and for resale. And so they're advertised. You see advertisements that say, hey, if you'd like to be a web attacker and make money online, buy my web exploit kit. And using my web exploit kit, you can hack thousands of computers, and you'll start to be profitable and make money like me. And you see these ads, and they show shiny cars, and they show big houses, and they show piles of cash. And they're all being used to recruit people to buy these web exploit kits and go after websites around the world. And so with that, this is why we see uh, all these, whether it be a small educational institution or uh, a mom and pop furniture store in the, in the middle of nowhere, uh, having their website compromised is because these attackers are coming online, they're running scripts that are automatically scanning the web, and it's no longer a problem that only large companies face or large financial institutions face. Is anyone that has an internet presence is now has an equal chance of, 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 of having their site targeted in, in such a manner. And so this is really just one of the reasons that you know, educational institutions can no longer say, you know, it's not my problem. It's, it's not only a problem that, that faces businesses or enterprises, it's a problem that faces anyone that, that connects online. So these are the trends that we're seeing uh, from the attackers. These are new ways that the attackers are, are utilizing to increase their profitability. With that as a, as a backdrop, let's take a look at some of the things that you can do to safeguard your users and your data and your network in, in the face of such attacks. First of all, take in the due diligence of protecting your network. Right? Move over from the mindset of it's, it's not my problem, it's not something that only pertains to business users, um, but actually do the due diligence of protecting your network. Whether that means you know, anti-spam and email security or a web application firewalls to protect your websites or a next generation firewalls to protect your users and their browsing activities. Uh, the other uh, second thing we'll point to is actually educating your users. And if you think about the last time that we educated users on the web, we told users to, to look for a little lock at the bottom of the browser. And we said as long as that little lock is there at the bottom of the browser, everything's fine. Because it means that you have SSL and you're encrypted and everything's fine. Well, the world's changed a lot since then. That meant that that domain is who that they say they are, but it doesn't mean anything about a domain that has 100 million users behind it or 500 million users behind it. So there's a, a broken trust model on the web, so there's a need to, to re-educate users and teach them about the latest threats uh, and proactively and don't just assume that all your users know about the latest security problems that they encounter online. And the, the third point that I mentioned is actually uh, protecting your users. And protecting your users doesn't mean that you have to control your users. I know for years universities and educational institutions have, have stayed out of the way because there's this need to have open access. But open access doesn't mean that you remain blind to threats that may face your users. So there's the ability to protect your users without carrying out uh, forceful controls and, and content filtering on your users. So it's explore the technologies that are available for that nowadays. Thanks for spending some time with us today. I hope you found this information useful. Uh, we at Barracuda Networks look forward to hearing from you and working with you to protect your users and your data. Thanks.